Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to block number two of the Down Home Christmas. Uh, Christmas in July. Free quilt along. Uh, Y'all, this is a sampler quilt. Today we're doing block number two, the churn dash. Hello, everybody. I'm going to give it a few minutes so that everybody gets notified that we're live. Everyone who set reminders. Um, that's a great way if you are busy like me <laughs> and you don't want to forget I try to put the thumbnail up the day before the video so you can go and set a reminder. Hello, everybody. It's so great to see you. So I'm going to give it a few minutes so everybody who wants to catch us live and join in the chat, they get notified. Uh, yesterday, during the live and after the live. I missed it while we were live. Sometimes I miss a lot of comments, y'all. And I don't mean to. It's just sometimes it goes by so fast. Several people mentioned that there's another typo. Y'all, these pattern makers need to get their act together. <laughs> block number 12, it says block number eight. What is block number 12? Hold on a second, I'm gonna go take a peek, say. Block number 12, where is it? Oh yeah, the Christmas, oh, it even says Christmas wreath. It's a Christmas tree, trees, y'all, that is block number 12. 12 the one after the rail fence block number 12 is the christmas trees not christmas wreath and that's not block number eight so there's a typo there you might want to change that <laughs> and hopefully these pattern makers will get their act together hello everybody it's so great to see you uh I also had people ask me uh, what fabrics I'm using. So I have gathered some salvage edges from some of the fabrics that I used already in my cornerstones and sashing and in block number one. So we'll take a peek at that before we start today's block. And just to let you know, uh, those fabrics I sourced from a quilt shop in Chester, Vermont. The quilt shop is called Country Treasures. And they have a website. It's called vermontquilting.com. Their online, I went to their website today. It says their online shop is down, but they give a phone number on their website. If you see any of the fabrics I'm using and you just have to have them, you can call them up. I have no affiliation with them. I just shop there when I'm there. <laughs> uh, when I go to Vermont, if I can, it's a good little hike from Harlan's parents' house, but if I'm able, I go over there and check out what they have. So I'll show you those salvage edges here in a second. And then uh, I had a couple of questions. Could this quilt be done as a quilt as you go? And I believe absolutely yes. Now, 100% transparency with you, I've never done a full-size quilt, a larger quilt, as a quilt as you go. But I think this pattern lends to quilt as you go perfectly and it would be absolutely doable. There are tons of resources uh, here on YouTube to learn how to do quilt as you go. I'm not your teacher on that because I just haven't done many large quilts like that. Uh, but there are teachers on YouTube that will teach you how. And if you're on the Creative Crew Group, uh, look up search Linda Russell Jones. And scroll through her post because she has done some quilt as you go tutorials on the creative crew that have been helpful for a lot of people. Okay, so if you're thinking quilt as you go, as you're starting to put together these pieces and you're leaning in that direction, yes, I believe that you could do that with this quilt. Hello, everybody. I think that's everything and I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera down. We're going to take a look at my fabrics real quick. We're going to take a look at these fabrics. All right. Uh, I did not shop or source my fabrics from one particular uh, line of fabric. I just went through the shop, y'all. I did buy some yardage and I bought a ton of fat quarters because they were having a sale on uh, fat quarters and they were a dollar a piece and they're normally like $3.99 a piece. So I bought a whole bunch of fat quarters, like 40 of them, 40 or 50. 
and I bought some yardage. All different brands, all different lines of fabric. This green fabric is what I have used as uh, the middle part of my sashing, and it's from Robert Kaufman. And I don't think it has a line. Yeah, just Robert Kaufman. <laughs> you might want to search him, search his website. Uh, it's this green, and it's got little, little tiny designs in it. That is part of my sashing. Um, this is my larger border. Okay, the big border that I've cut. It is Pam Buddha of Heart Spun Quilts, Starry Skies. MarcusFabrics.com. That's the fabric that I am using as my big border. And uh, you saw this yesterday. So if you want to see more of this, you can go back to video number one. Uh, today, I'm going to be using this blue fabric. A is for Annabelle, Tasha Tudor Collection. So if you were to call up Country Treasures and say, hey, I'm looking for this blue fabric. A is for Annabelle, Tasha Tudor Collection. They'd probably be able to go straight to it, <laughs> right? If you just have to have any of these. This one uh, I used for my 16 patch. It was from Wyndham Fabrics. Uh, and I don't know if... This will be helpful, but uh, pattern number 36238B, that might be helpful. <laughs> that was part of my 16 patch, and this was part of my 16 patch, and it's called Wit and Wisdom by Kim Deal for Henry, and then I cut off the salvage. That's all I know. <laughs> that was part of yesterday's block, too. So those are the fabrics that I've used up into this point. Uh, and I'll try to save salvages as I'm going block to block because from here on out, I'm using a bunch of fat quarters and sometimes it has the name on it and sometimes it doesn't. But all of these fabrics came from Country Treasures. VermontQuilting.com. Again, their phone number is on the website. Uh, they're not paying me. They're not endorsing this video, but they're an awesome quilt shop. So you might want to give them a call. And I think that is it. Let's take a look at the fabrics that I'm using today. Today we're doing the churn dash. Hello, everybody. Oh, Connie said you need itty bitty scissors when cutting the deer <laughs> her hand hurts i'm sorry <laughs> yeah the little antlers right there y'all are working way ahead of me y'all are so far ahead of me today we're doing the churn dash i have all the measurements here let's go over them real quick here are my fabrics uh i do not have a salvage edge for this green i looked uh, it was one of the fat quarters, and it did not say what fabric this is from. So let's go over the pieces we need for our churn dash block. We're working with uh, the E fabric, which is the slate blue. This is what I'm using for my slate blue. You'll need four pieces that are two and a half by four and a half, and you'll need two that are five inches by five inches. These will be our half square triangles. The B fabric is the uh, brick red, right? You'll need two, four, two and a half by four and a half. And you'll need two, five and a half by five and a half. And then the F fabric is right in the middle. And this is your light sage green. And it is four and a half by four and a half. So these are our fabrics for today. Of course, you can use any colors that you're working with that you want to use. Absolutely feel free to do that. Today, we're going to get started by making some half square triangles. And to do that, we're going to be making four of them. 
So I want you to set your four and a half by four and a half and all of these two and a half by four and a half pieces, we're gonna just set those aside for a minute. And right now we're only working with the five inch by five inch pieces. And I do have here on block number two, a short little diagram of what you're gonna do to remind you of how we are making the half square triangles, okay? So if you're, if you're making this later, that should uh, be a little reference of what to do first. I'm gonna need a pin. We're gonna get started making these half square triangles. We're gonna take one of each and we're gonna flip one pretty side down. And for these half square triangles, we're gonna be drawing a line corner to corner right down the middle. You might want to use uh, a pen that disappears or a water soluble pen. This will be our cut line, but I'm using a regular pen so it shows up really good in the video. <laughs> My heat erasing pen is running low on ink and I need to get some more. We're gonna do that to two of these, right? Right on the back side from corner to corner. And then we're gonna pair them up with our brick red fabrics and make sure those are lined up nice and pretty. And I just like to throw a couple pins in there to keep them in place. Like that. Nice and pretty and pin them. Hello, everybody. It's so great to see you. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and we're not sewing directly on the line. We're sewing a quarter inch away from the line on both sides. Okay, and you'll see me do that. That's the first thing we're gonna do. So set your machine at a quarter inch seam allowance. And we're gonna line up the edge of the foot right on that line like that. And we're gonna sew one side and back up the other. And I just spin it right back around and come back the other side. So there's our first set. We have got one more set to do. And our last side. There we go. So this is, we're about halfway done. With our half square triangles, we can take these pins out and I'm gonna get my iron heating back up. As Soon as she gets warm, we're just gonna give this a press before we cut it apart. We're just gonna set those seams real quick. And that just takes a second. 
just like that. And now we are going to cut these squares apart and that's going to give us four separate pieces. Is that going to be long enough? Not quite. <laughs> that's all right. We're going to work with it. Now we are cutting directly on the line that we drew from corner to corner. So there's two. And there's two. Uh, we're going to keep that handy because we will be squaring these up and trimming these down. They're a little bit bigger than what we need them to be. And for today's video, I'm going to go ahead and press these seams open. Which is not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> Wow, Auntie Anne said, it's super smoky here in Twin, too. Ooh. Wow. I'm just opening that up and giving it a press. So who all has gotten their 16-patch block done from yesterday. Some of y'all are already working on blocks five, six, and seven. <laughs> Miss Constance, I saw your message over on the creative crew right before I was coming on live about the applique. I am going to be showing how to do the applique tomorrow for block number three. But <clears throat> I think where you might be confused is because I listed you either need freezer paper or a fusible. You don't need both. You just need one or the other, depending on which method uh, of applique you want to do. So what I suggest you do before tackling those blocks is do a search. I have, I have lots of videos on applique and some of them are using freezer paper and some of them are using heat and bond light. Take a look at both videos and see which method you want to use and then follow the instructions in those videos. That would be really helpful. All right, that didn't take as long as I thought it would. Now we have four half square triangles. Those are pretty. I like those colors. Ooh, they're just a shy bit bigger than four and a half. We need to square them down to four and a half by four and a half. I think mine are almost four and a half by four and a half because my fabric is thick. It is super thick and paired with the thread that I'm using, it is eating up my seam allowances, and uh, therefore I am having to use a scant quarter inch when I sew my pieces together. All right, so let me just trim these down to four and a half by four and a half. Four and a half, four and a half. Yeah, it's just a small little smidgen, not much. There we go. I'll trim those little dog ears off here in a second. See, that was just a little tiny bit. Four and a half by four and a half. Again, just tiny little slivers. <laughs> Four 
four and a half, four and a half. This one was a little bit bigger. And this is our last one. Four and a half, five, four and a half. There we go. I think that's all the cutting we have for this block at this point. We're just gonna toss that right in the floor. <laughs> and I don't know that it's necessary, but I am gonna trim these little dog ears off because it might add a little bit of bulk in those intersections and I don't want that there. Being really careful, I should have cut them before. I pressed those seams. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right. They're all trimmed up and nice and pretty. So we have our four half square triangles. And then we have the one center piece that's also four and a half by four and a half. And then what we have left to do is to piece these two and a half by four and a half inch pieces, right? Those are gonna be the pieces that go in the middle right there. So we're gonna do some chain piecing to get those together. Mary said, Lisa, I saw you had a template for a scant quarter inch. Do you have them so we can download it? Mary, yes, they're in my Etsy shop. And so uh, if you go to Lisa Cape and Quilts on Etsy, uh, there is a link to my Etsy shop in the description box that would bring you over to my shop. You should see them there. So it actually has so three different seam allowances. It's got the quarter inch. It's got a scant quarter inch. And it has a half inch, which is really popular for quilt backs. I use a half inch seam allowance when piecing my quilt backs. And then it does have a test card, a little reminder to show you how to test your seams to make sure that your seam allowance is right. So those are, yeah, they're in my Etsy shop. I laminated mine and punched holes and keep them on a hook at my machine. But you don't have to laminate them. You could just print them. <laughs> print them on paper or cardstock. All right, everybody, we're going to go and sew these two and a half by four and a half inch pieces. And I am going to set that scant quarter inch. If not, my pieces are going to end up smaller. There's a little black line. The red line is your normal. <laughs> I know you, it's too far away. You can't see it. Your normal quarter inch. And then the black line is what you line your needle up to. And even then, you still might need to adjust it a little bit. You know, those seam allowance are, are really dictated by sometimes the fabric you're using. Sometimes the thickness of your thread, right? So there is a little test card that shows you how to test it uh, before you get started sewing all your pieces. So I have four of each one of these. We're just going to pair them up pretty sides together. And we're sewing them the long ways, just like this, right along that seam. Match them up.
and match them up. This is our third set. And our fourth set. So the churn dash block has quite a little bit of work to do before we actually start assembling this block. But it is pretty simple sewing, right? Now we're just going to cut these apart and press these seams. Four seams to press. Let's scoot this pressing board over a little bit. There we go. Thank you, Teresa. It is pretty fabric, isn't it? It's gorgeous. I'm going to go ahead and open these seams up to today. I feel like living dangerously. <laughs> I'm gonna press my seams open today. Uh, speaking of living dangerously, I get to go to the doctor after we're done today. So I wanted to be like your friendly reminder. You know, last year, a lot of us missed our normal doctor's appointments. We might have missed our mammograms, our pap smears, our colonoscopies, our trips to the dermatologist. Um, we might have missed our physicals because of everything was closed, right? Here is your friendly reminder to set those appointments up. Time to start thinking about setting those appointments that you missed last year. Go ahead and set them up. I know nobody likes to go get a pap smear. That's what I get to do today. Too much information, right? But I really feel like it's important to stay on top of this stuff, right? And when I'm there, I will schedule my mammogram, which is a year overdue. I will schedule my body check for my skin, you know, skin places, skin cancer, which I have dealt with. Time to have that check again. So there's your friendly reminder as I press these seams open. <laughs> there we go. These blocks, once you've sewn and pressed, should measure four and a half by four and a half. Yes. That scant quarter of an inch really helps me because I'm going to tell you this fabric is nice and it is thick. It is a good quality fabric, but it's a lot thicker than what I normally sew with. <laughs> so that scant quarter of an inch really comes in handy or else all of my pieces, all of everything would just be a little bit too small. Bess said, is all of your fabric fat quarters besides what you showed at the beginning of the video? Yes, Miss Beth, it is. When we're done putting this together, remind me. If you're here, remind me. I'll go grab my bag of fat quarters because you might just be like, whoa, look at all of that. Remind me. Kim said, I didn't miss any of it. I just don't do them. Oh, Kim, I know nobody likes to do that stuff. It's kind of important, my friend. It's kind of important. Stitch pennies. I don't know if you got my message over on Patreon. When you get a minute, check it out before you go. 
All right, so here's all of our pieces. All right, we had to sew our half square triangles and we had to sew these units. And this was the easy piece for today's block. We're gonna go ahead and arrange them because we're ready to start sewing everything together. Now for my block, I put the slate blue in the corners and the brick red towards the inside. You feel free to arrange it however you want, right? It's your block. And then this piece goes right in the middle and this is your top row. Lisa said, what should I do since my block turned out small? How small is it? Here we are. Okay, so let's take a pause as I uh, arrange these. How small is it? And have you used the same seam allowance all the way through everything you're, you've sewn up until now? Has everything been small? If so, then keep using the same seam allowance on everything. Do not change anything and continue and everything will work out fine. Your quilt's just going to be like a little tiny smidgen, maybe half an inch to an inch smaller, maybe. I'm not doing the math in my head, but... Or you redo the block and you adjust your seam allowance now. And you might have to redo any sewing you've done up into this point. If that turned out smaller. But... Uh, since we're only on block two, now would be the time. If you want to make changes, you're only redoing two blocks versus all 12. But if you want to commit to it, then use exactly the settings you're using and uh, don't change that along the way. Everything will be a little bit smaller. Oh, yours turned out 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So you're a half inch smaller. Alexis's came out 12 and not 12 and a half. Alexis said she added a border to her block. That would be an easy way to fix it, although that's going to be a tiny, tiny, tiny border to bring it up the extra half inch. Here's what I suggest you do. If you want to remake the block, you cut yourself uh, three two and a half by two and a half squares, right? And you sew it with your quarter inch seam allowance and press your block. And when you're done, I want you to measure that middle block and it should be exactly two inches from seam to seam. And if it's not, if it's too small, you need to adjust your needle so that you are taking less of that quarter inch. All right. And then grab some more pieces and re-sew them and press again and remeasure. And you do that until you find that this middle piece from seam to seam measures exactly two inches. Okay. Uh, try that. Oh yeah, Sharla loves to quilt, said so check your cutting too, because sometimes that is the culprit. Yes. <laughs> Guilty. You're so welcome, Janet. Y'all are so welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So here's our layout. Ooh, I really like the slate blue and that barn red together. See, it kind of looks Christmassy without Christmas themed fabric. We're going to start sewing this block into three rows and I'm just turning the second piece over onto the first because I'm moving these pieces from here to the sewing machine. I'm going to give myself a little reference mark so I don't sew the wrong side, right? That little tiny mark is just going to help me keep straight so I don't accidentally sew the wrong side. All right, so we're starting off with 
these three pieces. Just matching up those seams. Here's our first one. Here's our second. And we're bringing in the third. And uh, I'm not going to press these before we bring in the next set of three pieces. I'm just going to stay right here at the sewing machine. So we can separate these. So here's our top row, and I'm just going to finger press that over. And we're bringing in the third piece. We can just lay it out just like that and make sure it's all situated right. And line it up. There we go. This is our middle section, and I'll finger press that over. Make sure it's situated the right way. Looks good. And our last row coming in. And we'll lay that, make sure it's right, check it. <laughs> and now at this point, I will press these seams because that'll help me nest those little intersection intersection points, right? So we have top, middle, and bottom. So let's press these seams towards the outside. Mm -mm -mm. These seams I am going to press to one side. That just helps me nest those seams when sewing these three rows together. Ooh, I really like these colors. I've seen a lot of chatter. Y'all, I've missed so much in the chat today, but I see it looks like lots of people need some prayers. So just know that I will come back this evening and read this, read through and see what all I've missed. But just know that I'm praying for each of you. So is everybody else. That's why I love doing the live chats, y'all. I love it. This middle section, I'm going to press the seams towards the middle piece, right? That's going to allow us to nest those seams. Oh, 
All right. And then uh, this bottom one, again, I'm pressing towards these outside pieces. Oh, Alexis, I just saw that Hunter's not feeling well. Is it his ear? What's going on with Hunter? I know that for some of you, you've made hundreds of turn dash blocks. But I do know that for some of you, this is your very first one. So I hope that... Uh, I hope that you're enjoying this block. It is actually one of my favorite blocks, traditional style quilt blocks to do. So there's our three pieces and we have two seams left to finish up this block. Didn't want to eat. Now I know something's, he's not feeling well if Hunter doesn't want to eat. <laughs> Aw. Two more seams to finish up this block here and here. And we'll do both of those at the sewing machine and press those two seams all at one time. So I'm going to bring the first two pieces. I have the top and the middle. And I'm just, ooh, slippery. We're going to flip the top over. And because those two seams are going in opposite directions, when you rub them together, you're gonna feel a catch. That's gonna help us get those pretty points right there. I'll go down and catch this seam right there. And then finish lining the rest of this piece up. Now we're just going to open this up and just finger press it flat, right? So that we can bring in the bottom portion and attach that while we're right here. So I'm just gonna bring it in, make sure it's laid out the right way, and then flip it over and match up those seams. Now I know for some of y'all, if you're trying to sew with me live, I might be going a lot faster. That's one of the awesome things about the replay. So I apologize if I've gone faster than you, I'm sorry. Make sure that seam is there. And now all we have left to do is to press these two seams. Oh, Anitra, you got your air conditioner fixed. Woo! I'm so glad for you. <laughs> I would be so miserable. I'm going to go ahead and press my pieces like this today. 
You want to be really careful that you're not stretching out, stretching your uh, block out because of these half square triangles. They can be a little stretchy, right? So you don't want to just stretch them out of shape. And I want you to see you should have a quarter inch at the tip of your half square triangles. That's going to be your seam allowance when you join your block to the sashing. Move it in here. There we go, Lisa. <laughs> I just like to make sure those seams are going all the same direction. And press. Tammy, uh, if you're looking for the quilt as you go on the Creative Crew, search Linda Russell Jones. She does a good majority of her quilts, quilt as you go, and she has some tutorials that she's put together. And uh, you'll go to Creative Crew and either go to the video, the media section, or just in the search box on Creative Crew, type in Linda Russell Jones. And it'll bring up all of her posts, just her post, and you can scroll through. You might have to scroll through quite a bit <laughs> to find them. There we go. Isn't she pretty? Let's give her a measure and just see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and a half. Again, I'm only getting that twelve and a half because of my scant quarter inch. But there's our finished turn dash block. To me, it looks Christmassy. That kind of looks like snow, doesn't it? And it's just flowers on blue fabric. <laughs> it looks like winter to me. Yes, that is gorgeous. So we're going to hang out for a few minutes now that we have this block done. So if you have questions and I've missed them, now's the time to ask. Tomorrow we're going to be doing block three. This is applique, y'all. So you're going to either need some heat and bond light or some freezer paper if you don't want to sew your applique, try a permanent applique fusible like Heat and Bond in the red package. Tomorrow we will be um, sewing this down, our three letters. I might go ahead and pre-cut them before the video because that is time consuming and I might use my brother's skin and cut to do it. Uh, I haven't decided yet, but I probably will cut these letters out and be ready for that. Uh, for tomorrow's video, but it's easy cutting because the background is 12 and a half by 12 and a half, right? <laughs> That's easy cutting. All right, Miss Beth, I'm going to go grab those uh, back quarters. Yes, give me just a second. <laughs> <laughs> this is my fabric bag from Country Treasures. Now, I do have a confession. There's two pieces in here, and I'll show you which ones they are, that uh, Miss Jeannie sent me yesterday, and they kind of go with what I bought, so I put them in here. But everything else is from Country Treasures. <laughs> Let's take out the yardage first. Because I bought yardage. This is not yardage. This is from the block. I bought yardage for uh, the big border. And that, that's what I have left over. And these 
two fabrics are from Jeannie. So I'm not going to show those because you probably can't get those. <laughs> uh, this was a fat quarter that I've already pressed. This is from... Ooh, Judy's 25th Anniversary by Judy Rothermill. Marcus Fabrics. Isn't that pretty? So I was going to use this one for my churn dash, but I kind of liked the, a, the little bit darker of the brick red for the churn dash. This is my small border, Wit and Wisdom, by Kim Deal for Henry Glass, pattern 1426. This is... Uh, well, you saw this. This is the center of my churn dash, and it did not have a salvage edge. So I do not know who made that. <laughs> and you saw this in the beginning of the video. Those are all the extra pieces. Now, the rest. <laughs> the rest is all back quarters, and I'm just going to start pulling them out. I'm putting them here on the table. I do think this one's Christmassy. That kind of looks like a Christmas bulb a little bit, right? That might be the only Christmas one I got. I think she said, okay, see the little ribbon on them? There's a black, yellow, and red. Those are different prices. And I don't know what original prices they were, like $3.99, $2.99, something like that. Uh, but they were having a sale the day I was there, and all of them were $0.99, cents, no matter what color ribbon was on them. <laughs> and if you are a fat quarter junkie like I am, if you're ever in Chester, Vermont, you would love this store because in every room of this store and it's very quaint when you go in every room of this store has boxes of fat quarters so every room you go in you're like oh there's more fat quarters and you go through and you pick some from each room right and then there's one room that is like nothing but fat quarters and I have this weird fascination with fat quarters I love them Maybe because I love scrappy quilts, uh, so I always pick up fat quarters. But these are just an assortment that I thought might go really well with the colors of this quilt. And I'm not even going to use anywhere close to all of these. So a lot of these are going right into my stash once I'm done. And I won't even probably take the little thingy off of them. But yes, look at that. I got this one because uh, I live in Williamsburg, Virginia. And uh, our thing is pineapples. So I do want to use that somewhere on the quilt with the pineapples. But isn't that just so pretty? Oh my goodness. Yeah, Vicki said, all the states have good good places to visit. This one, uh, Vermont, Chester, Vermont. And if you're coming in after we started, they do have a website. Uh, it's vermontquilting.com. And I went there this morning, and it says that their online site is down, but they give a phone number, and you can call them up. And place an order that way. When I was in the store, uh, their website was not working. And she told me they're doing maintenance on their website. So they've got it running. But the online portion for ordering is not working. You still have to call them up. But, yeah, if I ever get a chance to go in there when we're up that way, I do.
I love my crafts. I get fat quarters everywhere. I am not partial or biased. <laughs> if somewhere, no matter where I am, if I see fat quarters, I have to get some. Ms. Vicki, I must have missed your trimming comment because I must have missed that. Yeah, this was a good buy. I added it up. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got thirty. 30 fat quarters. So my fat quarter purchase was 30 bucks. But 30 times 3.99 that would have been more. I would have never got this many. <laughs> I might I might have gotten 5 or 6. 5 or 6, but at 99 cents, there you go. That was my haul. Yeah, Jean said fat quarter here, fat quarter there. <laughs> Yeah, Beth said that would have been $120 just for this. Well, I've already cut three fat quarters, right? So this minus three. Yeah. Ooh, Sheila just looked on their blog and the sale runs through the end of July. Call them up, y'all. Tell them, uh, hey, Lisa Cape and Quilts was in your shop. <laughs> Uh, let's see, it would have been maybe three weeks ago now, and she bought a whole bunch of fat quarters, and here is the video where she showed them off at the end of her video, and I would like to have some of those and see if they have any left. Again, they're not paying me. I'm not endorsed by them. I don't even know the owner or the people who work in there, although she was really nice. The lady who was checking me out, she was really nice. Uh, but I don't know who they are. The name of it is uh, Country Treasures. Oh, you know what? I'll, since we're done with the turn dash block, let me go ahead and see if I can't screen share. You won't see me because uh, this part is messed up for today. But I will show you uh, their website. How's that? Because on the website, it's got a phone number. Quilt shop near Chester, Virginia. Country Treasures. And their website. VermontQuilting.com. You'll see that right there. VermontQuilting.com. This is uh, their website. And uh, that's their phone number on the screen. It looks like they have a blog, a newsletter. Ooh, you can uh, take a look at the town of Chester, which is pretty awesome. But see the front of their shop? It is so dang cute. There's quilts everywhere when you walk through. It is just the cutest shop. And there's an upstairs. And it's actually much larger than what it, it appears from the front. It goes back pretty far. And there's an upstairs. So there's their store hours. And oh yeah. Say, see over five rooms are filled with over 6,000 bolts of fabric. And 10,000 fat quarters. So if you have a shopping problem with fat quarters like I do, don't even go to the website. Don't call them. <laughs> but if you're interested, that is their website. That is their phone number. And you can call them up. And uh, yeah. So here's my shout out to Country Treasures because they were pretty awesome.
There we go. So uh, let's see. I know I asked for a show of hands for who was done with the 16 patch. Who has worked ahead of me and has all of these blocks done? I know some of you are working on it, but who has all of their blocks done? Anitra said, Lisa, I need to stay married. Don't go to the website, Anitra. I'm sorry. I'm tempting you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Tessa said, is there anyone here from Maryland? My sister can't find a store selling freezer paper. Tessa, I do know that if you can't find any stores in your area that carry the freezer paper, go online because Amazon, you can order it relatively cheap. And uh, they can just ship it right to your house. Sheila said they are about to get busy. <laughs> They're like, why are all these people calling for fat quarters today? What is going on? <laughs> I don't know, y'all. I love supporting small businesses. Don't get me wrong. I love going to Joanne Fabrics. I do. I love Joanne Fabrics. I know what fabrics to buy and I know what fabrics to avoid, right? And I find some really great deals at Joanne Fabrics, but I also like to shop local and uh, support my small businesses as much as I can. Uh... So, yeah, there's my little shout out to a business in Vermont. Deborah just finished block number two. Yay! Hello, Miss Susan. You'll have to come back on the replay, especially if you missed my little haul of fat quarters. Oh, Dina said you can also order it online from Walmart. So you can go to their website. If they don't carry it in the store where you are, you can go to walmart.com and order freezer paper. Yes, thank you, Dina. Sheila said, have you ever been to Sunshine Quilt Corner in Newport News? Right when they first opened up, right when they first opened up, um... I have not been back since, but usually when I go there, they're closed. When I drive by there, they're usually closed. Probably because I go in the, like, after dinner time. <laughs> Sheila, you're close to me. We should have a shopping day at Sunshine Quilt Corner. Send me a message. We'll go shopping. Has anyone ever heard of a quilt shop called Peacemakers? No. Where is that at, Miss Kathy? Vicki said, looks like you are ready for fall colors. I'll, I'll tell you, my color palette has really changed in the last, in the last year. I've been buying more like homespun kind of colors. And a lot less of the bright and vibrant colors. So I see my stash starting to take a pivot in the colorways. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think my tastes are just changing. Oh, Tessa said we could do a live when we get there. I could ask them if they mind if we do a live while we're there. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't want you to take pictures or video. Um, I did ask if I could take pictures in uh, Country Treasures and she seemed a little iffy about it. So I did not take a lot of pictures. And maybe that's because in that shop, if you go in person, there are quilts for sale. There's all these quilts for sale that are just lining the walls and they're so much fun to look at. Uh, but they might not want to show, you know, show those. I don't know. So I did not take any videos when I was there or else I would have.
All right, Miss Kim, I hope you have a, a great rest of your day. She is doing housework. I've got to go to the doctor. So I reckon I should probably go get ready for that. <laughs> so, all right, tomorrow we will be meeting at uh, 12 o'clock again tomorrow. I will put a thumbnail up a little bit later so you can go and set a reminder for tomorrow's video. We will be making the joy quilt block, block number three. And in case you came in after we started, there is a typo. Block number 12 is mislabeled and misnumbered. We should fire whoever wrote this pattern, right? <laughs> oh, that's not block. <laughs> block number 12 is the Christmas trees, not the Christmas wreath. So if you missed that in the beginning of the video, it's actually block 12, Christmas trees. All right, y'all. I love you so much. Thanks for hanging out with me. And especially thanks for hanging out with me if you never intend on making this quilt. But you're just hanging out with us. Thank you so much. Y'all could be doing a thousand other things. So I don't take your time for granted. And neither does anybody else. We're all glad you're here. Tessa, I'm Eastern Standard Time. So right now it's 1.07 p.m. where I am. All right, everybody, I'm off to the doctor. I hope y'all have a great rest of your day. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I always have to find where this button is. There we go. All right, post pictures of your blocks. I want to see them. Bye, everybody. <laughs>